Welcome along fellow time travelers. This is Scott Cardinal. In this micro lesson, we're going to travel to Fall River, Massachusetts to check out the home where Lizzie Borden and her family lived as it was in 1892. The reason for micro lessons such as this is to celebrate the homes, gardens, and workspaces of creative people throughout history. And it's also to help people understand what the architectural and design elements are when they look at buildings. Also, studying architecture and design can help people increase their powers of observation that can be used in other areas of their lives. So, let's get rolling. When Lizzie Borden lived here, in the mid to late 1800s, number 232 2nd Street was a pretty tree-lined street in a neighborhood filled with well-to-do families, such as doctors and merchants. On the corner to the left is St. Mary's Cathedral. Construction of the Gothic Revival-style church began in 1852 and was completed in 1856. Now, as far as the residence itself, the wood house with a stone foundation was built as a two-family home in 1845. The Bordens arrived at the house in 1872 when Lizzie was about 12 years old. As you can see, it is an attractive and large house. And it is the house of a financially successful man. An ornate wooden fence runs along the entire front of the house. And there's a pedestrian gate to approach the front entry and another pedestrian gate to approach a path that runs along the side of the house. To the left of that, we see a large gate that is open for horses and carriages so they can pass through. And to the left of the entry door, you can see two windows with shutters. In fact, all of the windows of the house have shutters. And above them, along the second floor, are three windows. And above those, in the attic of the house, can be seen two windows. On the right side of the house can be seen five windows on the ground floor and five windows on the second floor. And looking up, you can see where the red brick chimney is. On the left side of the house, along the ground floor, you can see three windows and then a side entry door that is reached by ascending a few wooden steps. And then there's another window, this one's much smaller, to the left of the door. On the second floor are three windows, and then there's a fourth window directly above the side entry door. And then there's a smaller window on the far end of the house. Now behind the house is another building, and that's referred to as a barn. And you can see that there are doors on the ground floor, and there's a single window on the second floor. And it is in that barn where the Borden family keeps their horses and carriages and lots of hay, and they also use it for personal storage. And taking a look at the back of the house, you can see that there is a door in the center to descend down to the cellar. And above that are two windows on the ground floor, and there's one window on the second floor, and then there are two windows in the attic. Now to enter the house, you must approach the pedestrian gate and ascend the stairs. You then approach the heavy wooden door, and you turn the knob and you enter. You then find yourself in the front entry hall. And to the right, alongside the wall, is a staircase with wooden banisters. And to the right of the front door, there is a closet. And turning back to the entry hall, you can see a marble-covered cabinet on the left. Now turning directly to the left, you can see a door, and that is the entryway to the parlor. And this is the room where guests are entertained. It has the finest furniture in the house. And there are framed pictures on the walls that are covered with pretty floral wallpaper. And now there's a door on the far right, and it is there where you could enter the sitting room. And to the left is a long sofa. And there are chairs near the windows. And there's a table to the far right. And there's a fireplace on the far left. And on the mantel, they keep a clock and china vases and candlesticks. And to the right of that is a bookshelf. This is the room where Lizzie Borden's father, Andrew Jackson Borden, will soon be murdered with a hatchet by an unknown assailant. To the left is another room. This is the family's dining room. And it has a beautiful wood table that is covered with a fine linen cloth. And there are side tables for trays and there are mirrors on the walls. Now turning to the right, there's a door at the far end of this room. And that leads into the kitchen. There is a black stove on the right with a teapot and cast iron pans upon it. And there are some side tables and shelves with bowls and utensils and dishware upon them. And on the far left is a small pantry. And there's a hallway that leads to the back door on the side of the house. And to the left of that is a narrow staircase that leads all the way up to the top floors. In fact, it is this staircase that Lizzie's father and stepmother used to reach their bedroom on the second floor. And where their maid Bridget reaches her bedroom all the way up in the attic. The stairs to the bedrooms for Lizzie and Emma and for visitors is upstairs in the front portion of the house. You reach them by ascending the stairs in the front entry hall. And so if you follow those stairs all the way up to the landing, there is a door that leads to Lizzie Borden's bedroom. And it has a bed, and in the corner is a small table with a drape pulled aside. That is where Lizzie keeps a bowl and a pitcher for washing herself. And to the left is another door. And on the other side is a smaller room. 
There's a table in the corner and there's a bed. This is the room where Lizzie's sister sleeps. Her name is Emma Lenora Borden. She is 41 years old, she has never been married, and she has no children. For reasons unknown, this smaller room used to be where Lizzie slept. But a couple of years ago, when Lizzie returned from her grand tour of Europe, Emma offered her the larger room. And so they switched. And the sisters are very close friends. I mean, they would need to be since neither one of them has any real privacy. Because they share one door to enter and exit from the hallway. So leaving Emma's and then Lizzie's room, you find yourself back on the landing. And to the right is another room. That is the family's guest room. And it seems a bit strange that one of the sisters doesn't live in that room. But maybe the sisters just enjoy sharing their rooms or something. But still, I don't get it. But entering that room, it is nicely decorated with fine furniture. And there are two windows facing out to the front of the house and one window looking out to the side of the house. This is the room where Lizzie Borden's stepmother will soon be murdered with a hatchet by an unknown assailant. Exiting the guest room and returning to the landing to the right, you see another door. Now that leads to the room where the sisters keep their clothes. And so this concludes this micro lesson about the home where Lizzie Borden and her family lived as it was in 1892. If you have any thoughts about the subject matter, please put those in the comments below and share what's on your mind. If you enjoy this video, please share it, kindly give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, I wish you safe travels on all your journeys.